Biblical Perceptions. We have been discussing the topic, Revelation and the God revealed in it. With me, Don, Kirkland, and Damien. Before um, we go any further, we need to recapture um, the essence of what you began to describe, um, Kirkland, in a definition for inspiration. Could you continue with that? Yes. All right. There are some persons that believe that the words in the Bible, the very words, were inspired by God. And I was sharing before the break that Ellen White shed some light on this matter in Selected Messages, Book 1, page 21. This is what she said. It is not the words of the Bible that are inspired, but the men that were inspired. Inspiration acts not on the man's words or his expressions, but on the man himself, who under the influence of the Holy Ghost is imbued with thoughts. So God acted on the individuals and inspiring the individuals, they now expressed God's will in their own style. So are you saying that God takes into account the culture of the author, mm -hmm. his Def socioeconomic standing, his education? Definitely, definitely. Culture, education, social background, everything had a part to play in, in man's writing of the Bible. He understood it from his perspective. So what Moses said, what David said, what Matthew said, are not at variance with each other, even though they are different writers. They complement each other. Definitely. Uh, uh, Damien, there is a word that we find in scripture that has to do with God breathe. It's the Greek word theopneustos. Yes. Explain to the viewers, how does that take shape with understanding inspiration? It helps us to better understand what um, inspiration is all about, the whole process, the dynamics that, that, that is involved. It's God breathing, yes, motivating for want of a more modern word, is prompting. So men, the men are not moving by their own impulses. They're not moving based on their own agenda. Good. God is, you, you use the word that Ellen White um, used here, imbues um, them to, to write or to speak, and not all the prophets were writers. So some of them, they, and, and Peter said that they speak as, this, as the Holy Spirit moved mm -hmm. upon them. So that's the, that's the whole notion of it. The Holy Spirit, he is the author of the Bible, as it were. Even though men ex use human expressions and anthropomorphic languages, mm -hmm. but the ideas, the theme, the, the message is not, has not died. It's not lost in all of the dynamics involved. You know? Okay, thank you so much. Now, let's look at the mystery of the triune God. The mystery of the triune God. Genesis 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Does the Bible attempt to prove God? Because what we're saying um, to our viewers, we have to not only understand the inspiration, but we have to understand the person, the God, who inspired the writers. So tell me, this God of Genesis chapter 1, what is he like? Can he be understood? Can he be... Can he be fully measured in human terms? Tell me about this God of Genesis chapter 1. Well, uh, I believe that the, 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 the drive, the, the purpose, the intention of the Bible 
is not necessary to give us an explanation of God. Uh, it gives us a revelation of God. And what is revealed concerning God in Scripture is sufficient for the spiritual experience that we need to have with Him, is sufficient for our redemption. And I believe that God in His wisdom would do it that way. Okay. Because if we make reference to, to Hebrews, I believe, chapter 11 and verse 6, yes. that mm -hmm. speaks of the necessity of faith yes. in pleasing God and doing His will. Mm -hmm. If the Bible revealed everything about God's nature, God's history, where He came from, and so on and so forth, there would be no need for faith. Mm -hmm. So it's powerful when the Bible says, in the beginning, God. You know, I, I, I sense a kind of, um, I'm not sure if it's a correct word, but a sanctified arrogance that God is entitled to there. <laughs> Take it or leave it, you yes. know? I am and, God, and, I'm here. And, 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 and the atheist can't get beyond that. He can't get beyond those four words. <laughs> mm -hmm. In the beginning, God, you see? You, so, you, you use a very important word, um, you use the word faith, as right. in Hebrews chapter... 11, 11 verse 6 right. says, but without faith it is impossible, impossible totally to impossible. God. And he who comes to God must believe that he, he is. is. That's it. And uh, in, in, in some theological terms we say there is an isness <laughs> about God. Right. Correct. Isness about Correct. that. Right. A Correct. present reality yes. that we cannot shake yes. is there. Yes. Um, is there all the time. But let me let me see what does the Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4 say about this God. Yes, I, I, another one of those um, sanctified arrogance that, yes. I, that, I, that I spoke about. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Okay, mm -hmm. this, is, this is powerful. Mm -hmm. but, but, but how can we find oneness in God, Don, when... The word Elohim suggests, Elohim in Genesis in one, suggests a plurality, a kind of a, a kind of a oneness in plurality. Yes. Or a plurality in oneness. Yes. How, how do you explain that when, when it says, uh, Hear, O Israel, and this, by the way, is a Shema. Right. Um, right. The Lord our God is one. Right. Right. What, what is he right. saying? And, and, and I believe we can find a very simple answer in uh, one of the first institutions that the Lord established when he created uh, the human race. I'm making reference to the family. Yeah. And the, 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 the family unit is one of the means by which the Lord reveals a lot about himself. And we can find this oneness and unity um, along with that plurality in the family unit. Okay. I am West, yes. right? And if you come to my house, you will see some other West there. Okay. All right? Yes. We are one. Nobody will tell me that we are not one. That's more the West than the West will use. Yes. <laughs> right? Um, so so, so the, the plurality in the sense that God is manifested in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And there are functions yes. that each of these entities mm -hmm. performs. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the overall goal, the purpose, it is one purpose. Okay. What, 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 does, what does Genesis 1.26 do to shed a light on what Don just said, uh, Kirkland? Genesis 1.26 is suggesting that more than one being was active there in the creation process of mankind. When it says, and let us make man, let us make man, there, it, it, it could not just be talking about one being. You will see that it must be some multiplicity. And based on other biblical support that we have gotten, we see that it was more than one, in essence. Mm -hmm. So although you have one God, you still have, we have scribed a triune God based on evidences presented in the scripture. Um, what, 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 about, what about Genesis chapter 11? Chapter 11, the same expression is used there again. Let us, let us go down to confound at the Tower of Babel. You know, um, this let us, it, it, it's really expressing and capturing 
for us the, the notion of the, the plurality of God. The same Elohim that says, let us make man. He's saying um, to, to himself or themselves, let us go down and confound. So it's, there's a unity in their mission. There's a unity in their aim. Mm -hmm. They're, they're co-equal. No one is more divine than the other. It's God that is talking. The same God that says, we are one, uh, you know. Is there anything about this God, this triumvirate, this mm -hmm. divine triumvirate yes. that we sometimes say, expressed in the baptism of Jesus? Yes, it's, it's very much dramatic there. The River Jordan, when Jesus went to be baptized, you know, he, he went there, he was in the water. Scripture says that after he went down and he came up, practicing baptism by immersion. No, this, this, the Spirit of God lightened upon him in the form of a dove. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, there was a voice from heaven. We accept that voice to be the Father, God the Father, saying, this is my beloved Son, mm -hmm. in whom I'm well pleased. So the Father is in heaven, divine. the Son is in the water, yes. and the Holy Spirit comes over his head. Yes, that is uh, the divine triumvirate right, right there right. Um, in classic style. Yes. But um, viewers, um, you need to understand that what we're seeking to do is to establish the fact that while the Bible is inspired, we must find who is at the heart of inspiration. Yes. That's why we have to find out who this God is. When we shall have found who this God is, then we can better understand and appreciate the Bible itself. We're going to take another break. Viewers, do stay with us here on Biblical Perceptions. We will be right back.